most pet parents generally want what's best for their pets. And so we treat them as best we can, we give them the best food that we can, but what if I told you that some of the most popular foods that people are feeding their dogs are actually causing more harm than good? Let's investigate. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Holmes and welcome to another episode of Pet Doc Sherlock, where we help people solve the mysteries of pets. And there's a story going around in the news, if you haven't heard it by now, that grain-free diets are actually causing problems in dogs. Now, let's look back a little ways and think about just kind of dog food in general. For many years, marketers and ad campaign managers have been really smart at how to hook pet parents into purchasing their foods. They'll use a cute little puppy. They'll slap a celebrity chef on the bag. They'll talk about how your dog is just like a wolf and release its inner wolf by feeding it this food. And all of that's well and good, and I've never had much of a problem with most commercial foods that are out there. And then this term grain-free came out of seemingly nowhere, and people started thinking that if I feed my dog grain-free, it's better. Now, I'm not gonna bash grain free, that's not what I'm here for. I've never really cared that someone feeds grain free because it, at one point we thought, was not causing any harm. I just didn't love that lots of companies were getting people to spend extra for grain free when it really doesn't matter. Because, let's face it, is a teacup chihuahua really just like a wolf? or a Maltese, or a Dachshund, or a Poodle, or a Golden Retriever, you name it. They don't look like a wolf, they don't act like a wolf. We have genetically modified them to have a particular breed that is very different than a wolf. So it goes without saying that if they're different on the outside, they're probably different to some degree on the inside as well. The other thing is most grain-free foods, if you look at them, also contain carrots and various other ingredients such as potatoes and beans and I'm pretty sure wolves aren't eating that either. So the argument that it's like what a wolf eats and it'll release your dog's inner wolf is kind of invalid. The other is some people think that dogs have lots of allergies to grains, and yes, there are some dogs that have corn allergies and things like that, but it's really uncommon. People generally have allergies to grains. Dogs, believe it or not, tend to have an allergy to the protein source. Usually, if they have a food allergy, it's to chicken or beef. So it's not even important to remove grains from an allergy perspective. So I'm not really sure how or why the grain-free thing started, but it did, and it took off like crazy. People were buying into um, the commercials and the ads and everything else, and I don't blame them. They were done very, very well, and the food companies have been able to make a lot of money off of it. And again, I had no problem with it except for the fact that it was more expensive and not necessary. Otherwise, I was like, you know what? If it's working for you and your dog, great. I don't have a problem. Until recently, when reports started coming out that dogs were starting to get sick because of grain-free foods. And I don't mean slightly sick. Very sick. And the biggest issue was the disease that's occurring is really, really hard to find. And usually you don't find it until it's been going on for quite some time. So what is this disease? It's something called dilated cardiomyopathy. Really long words, I'll abbreviate it to DCM, but if we break it down it's not too complicated. Dilated just means kind of expanded, cardio means heart, Myo means muscle, and apathy is a disease of. So it's a disease of the heart muscle that causes it to dilate. Now, usually we see this in just a very select few breeds of dogs, such as Boxers, Dobermans, and Great Danes. There are a few other breeds that pop up here and there, but generally those are the ones that we see it in the most. 
And so what occurred is cardiologists at various veterinary schools at uh, UC Davis, Tufts, Cornell, NC State, and a couple of others started seeing DCM in breeds that we have never really seen it before. And they started to think, what in the world is happening? I've seen several DCM cases in the last month in breeds I have never seen before. And I'm a cardiologist. This is what I do. I've done it for years and I haven't seen this. So they started digging a little deeper and trying to find some common thread between these breeds. And they discovered really only one. All of these dogs had been eating grain-free food from the time they were very little to now. And let's look a little bit at this little diagram. I'm no artist by any means, but I'll show you why DCM is so problematic. So your heart is made up of four chambers. You have two atrium and two ventricles at the bottom. And the heart is one big muscle. It serves one function, to pump blood through the entire body. It's this, in some dogs, it can fit in my hand easily and it pumps blood through the whole body. That's so cool, but the heart muscle, the wall of the heart, is all one solid muscle. So it should look kind of like this. It's just like, think about a strong guy or gal. If they've got strong biceps, then they're larger. They're more dense. Now, what happens in DCM is the heart dilates. It expands. It starts to get bigger, but not because the muscle is getting bigger. It's not a bodybuilder who's building more muscle. It's expanding because the muscle's getting thinner. So instead of looking like this, it ends up looking like that. Now, when this muscle contracts, it's nice and dense, it's big, it's gonna have a powerful contraction. When this muscle contracts, not much is gonna happen. Think about, say, a guy in his 20s versus a guy in his 70s. They may both be in shape, but their muscles are going to be very, very different. And that's just it. That's the problem. We're, we're having a change in the muscle. You can't see that. You can't know that it's happening until it's really bad. The muscle continues to get thinner and thinner until the heart can't squeeze hard enough to pump the blood through the whole body. And so the dog becomes weak. And then the dog starts to enter into heart failure. And if it goes on long enough, the dog will die because of DCM. Now, we don't know exactly which grain-free foods are causing this. We think currently that it's foods that contain a lot of legumes, so um, beans like chickpeas, garbanzo beans, soybeans, things along those lines, and, and diets that contain a lot of potatoes as well. But we don't know exactly why this is happening in dogs who eat grain-free food. What we do know is it's the only link we found in all these little dogs and these odd breeds that are starting to show up with DCM. So what I tell people right now is this. I say, I didn't have a problem with grain-free food before, but now it looks like it might be problematic. The safest thing to do at this point in time, until we can figure out what's going on and why this is happening, is to switch your dog to a non-grain-free food, a normal food. Companies that I uh, know a lot about and have done a lot of research are Hill's Science Diet, Purina One or Purina Pro Plan, and Royal Canin. Um, all of their commercial diets are just fine um, for, for your dog. But I'm not trying to freak people out. I'm not trying to bash grain-free, but I am concerned about my patients. I'm concerned about my dogs. And I don't want this to happen to your dog. And so if you're feeding a grain-free food, you can even stick with the same company you're with. I, I just look into something that's um, a normal diet that does contain a small amount of grains until we can figure out exactly what's causing this issue. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope you've learned some information. I'm going to have a more thorough article about this on my website, PetDocSherlock.com, so check that out. But again, my main goal is not to tell you exactly what diet to feed or get paid by some company because I'm not. And it's not even to bash grain-free foods because of their marketing. This is just something that we've started to see that's very concerning, that's kind of flying under the radar, that we want you to know about. 
So if you have any questions, let me know. Send me an email. Put a comment below. If you liked this video, please hit like and subscribe. And until next time, always remember to keep your pets happy and healthy.